All right, and welcome to the Vani Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state in the servile society. Uh, today I've got uh, another intermission episode for you, uh, I guess the start to uh, a little uh, ongoing thing I'll be doing. Um, I guess uh, just to, to, to summarize real quick, I've been uh, digitizing more. I uh, finally got around to organizing uh, in digit and getting back to digitizing uh, these old Vani publications that I got from Jim Stum. I uh, actually got uh, all of Ocean Living and Ocean Freedom Notes done, uh, which uh, actually just out on the LEO Publications website. So if you haven't uh, checked that out, uh, go to com and you can find uh, that brand new publication there. Um, but uh, yeah, today I, uh, I figured I'd start with... Uh, <laughs> Generally, these will be ones on self-liberation, but uh, going through these publications uh, is always a fun journey into history. And uh, as I've mentioned a couple times uh, in passing and haven't really gone into any of the details myself, um, there was a connection between uh, one of Rayo's, I guess, uh, associates of Innovator, that uh, old Vaughn uh, that old Vaughn Uzine, um, Kerry Thornley and uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. <laughs> so um, there were a couple excerpts from there. Apparently, uh, uh, yeah, apparently Kerry Thornley was charged by uh, by Mr. Uh, Garrison um <laughs> for uh, by attorney garrison for some things so we'll, we'll cover a couple of those articles and then uh, i found a supplementary article that uh, goes a little more in depth on the situation and uh then finally um i will uh, just briefly uh cover a uh i guess a website run by people who know carrie thornley um i was not uh, aware that uh carrie thornley.com or dot net or whatever it is i'll, I'll put it i'll put it in the show notes and it'll be on on screen for the uh for the viewers but uh yeah it'll be uh We'll uh, we'll take a look at that too. So let's go ahead and uh, and uh, get started here. So this first uh, excerpt, there's a couple small excerpts. Um, Ocean Living Volume One, uh, Number Five, February 1968. Uh, the headline in February of this year: Ocean Living's first mate, Carrie Thornley, was charged with perjury by New Orleans District Attorney Garrison. Warren Report critic David S. Lifton, who in May of 1965 discovered the man-like images on the Dealey Plaza grassy knoll in the Mormon photograph, had had this to say about Carrie's arrest. It is not possible for the DA to just to be just mistaken on Thornley. A fork in the road has been reached for those who want to judge Mr. Garrison. If he convicts him, I think that enough information will come out to show any objective observer that Garrison's, uh, Garrison's Thornley theory makes no sense and is a creature of his own mind, his ego, and the false Oswald theories of, Hi of Harold Weisberg. On the other hand, if Garrison drops charges or a jury frees Thornley, Garrison will go down with the thud. The statements he has already made about Thornley, the charge for perjury, the arraignment, these are the events that have already passed. They cannot be undone. Garrison's foot is too far in his mouth on this one. Someone recently expressed the opinion that the only thing that will save him is either a false conviction or a can of raspberry-flavored Desinex. End quote. Um, and then there's a comment that people may, be, uh, may obtain background information from Kerry Thornley by reaching out to him. Which you can't do now because I don't think he's alive. But uh, anyway, that's uh, excerpt number one. Excerpt number two from volume volume one, number six, March 1968. Um, the uh, the following month, I presume. Um, some of these aren't very clearly um, clearly dated. I'm sure it could have been sussed out from uh, you know reading the publication, but I was just digitizing it, so I wasn't super super into it. But um, anyway, uh, here we go. Uh, for this, uh, the second excerpt. Uh, in February 1968, Ocean Living's uh, first mate, Carrie Thornley, was charged with perjury um, by New Orleans District, District Attorney Garrison, which we already knew. Uh, Warren Report critic Sylvia Meager, who single handedly indexed the Warren Report in the 26 volumes of exhibits and author of accessories after the fact, had this to say, uh, had this to, say to Carrie in a letter. I am further informed that you do not have means to ensure a proper legal representation against charges, which appear to result from outright harassment and entrapment on wholly false grounds by an unscrupulous and vindictive prosecutor who is pressing an uninformed, irresponsible, and often lunatic uh, investigation into the Kennedy assassination, which threatens to cast into utter disrepute all challenges to the Warren Report, including those which are legitimate, impartial, and scholarly. Such flagrant abuse of trust and such ruthless action against innocent bystanders can only arouse dis disgust and indignation, the more so when committed in the name of truth and justice, and abetted by certain of the critics of the Warren Report, who supposedly are wholly committed to high principles and the strictest ethical standards. I am enclosing herewith my check for $100 to assist you in meeting legal costs and defending yourself against specious and malicious charges, which amount to outright frame-up. I'm also sending copies of this letter to a number of persons, including reporters and editors, in hopes that they will be willing to call public attention to your plight and to assist you with funds to meet the costs of your defense. You may feel sure I will use every opportunity which presents itself to make the facts known and to enlist support. 
uh, end quote. So those are the only two excerpts from uh, the Ocean Freedom Notes, the only couple times it was, uh, it was brought up. And then, as I mentioned, there was a longer article that I came across, uh, which, of course, again, on screen and in the show notes for those who want to do, uh, to check it out. But uh, this was an article posted, um, mcadams.posc.mu.edu, uh, and I don't even know what mu.edu is. Just out of curiosity, let's see where this uh, propaganda camp is at. Oh, Marquette. Okay, interesting. Marquette University, for those who are curious. Um, so yeah, Marquette University has uh, a little bit of an archive on Thornley, for whatever reason. But anyway, um, this uh, article is titled, Is Jim Garrison Out of His Mind? by Kerry Thornley, which is published in Open City, a Los Angeles underground newspaper, um, issue uh, May 31, June 6, 1968. So this is uh, beginning opening with a quote from Jim Garrison from his Playboy interview in October of 1967. Quote, a young man approximating Os Oswald's description and using Oswald's name, we believe we have discovered his identity, engaged in a variety of activities designed to create such a strong impression of Oswald's instability and culpability in people's minds that they would recall him as a suspicious character after the president was murdered. End quote. When the majority whip of the United States Senate prompts a Playboy Southern DA to undertake an anti-establishment investigation, those who are not half mad with vengeance driven post-assassination hysteria or half blind out of political prejudice are prone to look for hidden motives. When a district attorney whose harassment of homosexuals has been notorious in the past begins to name names in the New Orleans homosexual community after announcing that he has solved the assassination, remarking by the way of psychologically penetrating explanation of par was that of an Iowa farm boy that would be hard to find normal uh, normal men who would plot to assassinate a president. Many people are liable to suspect a frame-up job of some kind is in the making. When a man who, is art, who has until recently defending U.S. involvement in Vietnam gets up before a microphone in public and seriously asserts that one of the fatal shots fired in the assassination he claims to have solved came at what could only have been a physically impossible angle from a Dallas sewer, a few are likely to worry over... A few are likely to worry over the possibility that a second cover-up uh, to the Kennedy assassination is in the making. And when the establishment press, Bobby Kennedy, the U.S. Attorney General, and Johnny Carson attack this man in such a rude and crude manner that for what is probably the first time in history, we have a, prosecu a persecuted prosecutor evoking the heartthrobs of the great American underground. One or two paranoid lunatics here and there might wonder why the establishment has suddenly, overnight, abandoned the sophistication with which it has held the levers of power since the time of Alexander, Alexander Hamilton in this country. Definitely more of that flowery, uh, discordian-type language. Um, back to it. Uh, I must confess that until I was uh, hereby commanded to go to New Orleans in a subpoena initiated by a man who calls himself a libertarian conservative, of all things, I myself entertained some of these highly paranoid fantasies. After all, isn't Mark Lane right when he says it is getting rational to be paranoid in this nation? Well, I might as well come clean. As a matter of fact, I kept entertaining these sick delusions, sick delusions ever after I got my orders to go, mainly because both Jim Garrison and his summons expressed, uh, expressed the incriminating and false opinion that I had been in close association with Lee Harvey Oswald, whom I had known in the service for three months in New Orleans in 1963. And while I did not cling to these, suspic uh, to these suspicions rigidly, I did turn them over and over in my mind, changing perspectives on them as the days passed. No sooner had I decided to go and cooperate fully with Big Jim and Harold Weisberg, a former intelligence agent for the federal government, rekindled my paranoia by coming up on the air in Tampa, calling from his goose farm apparently in Maryland, and uttering what I can only call in politeness what I, I can I can only in politeness call a number of half truths and otherwise morally dubious remarks. The Book of Tampa were told jeez. Sorry guys, people of Tampa were told by Mr. Weisberg reportedly that my book published in 1965 on Oswald, was not a book but a pamphlet, and were also informed that the reason Mr. Garrison wanted to speak to me was because of my comment in my Warren Commission testimony that I'd once heard scuttlebutt that Oswald had a secret clearance, a subject on which Garrison's office was later to display a conspicuous lack, of, lack, of, lack on interest. Mr. Weisberg was not, however, the only goose-tapping Garrisonite to make, this, to make this party line assertion in the days prior to my visit to testify in New Orleans. Most disturbing of all, however, uh, were Harold Weisberg's prissy seat of authority kissing comments that it was for Mr. Garrison, not me, to decide whether or not uh, I ought to go to New Orleans. Why? Because Mr. Garrison is conducting an official investigation. 
The Spanish Inquisition was an, an official investigation. Cotton Mather, Cotton Mather was conducting an official investigation. So is Joe McCarthy, and Mr. Johnson is conducting an official war. Does that mean it is not for me to decide whether or not I ought to go to Vietnam? And uh, he kind of rambles on for, for some time. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is longer than I thought it was. Um, yeah, let me see here. Um, but anyway, yeah, he just goes on rambling in the flowery language. And uh, for the sake of time, I will uh, refrain from, from going through all that. But uh, I will uh, pick up a, pick up a, here and conclude. Uh, the best argument I've ever heard for the theory that Garrison is both sincere and right, in spite of screwball corkscrew codes and post office box paranoia, is that after so much floundering around, you cannot possibly have failed to uncover something somewhere. Personally, I wonder if he didn't have this uh, same optimistic ace up the sleeve hope, and in when, uh, one year and a half dozen theories ago, he announced having solved the assassination. What this assumes, however, is some measure of competence on the part of a criminal investigator who has, in my own experience, so far only succeeded in making fearless Fosdick look like uh, Sherlock Holmes. A man who never discusses his cases with anyone, Jim Garrison let it become an open secret in the critical community shortly after my arrest that he was toying with the possibility that I might be the second Oswald. This should not have come to me as, as the surprise it did. I was misled, I guess, by Mr. Garrison's comments on the second Oswald in the Playboy interview, as these did not apply to me. Further, I reason that, contrary to all appearance, appearances, some kind of gesture toward investigation aimed at finding out the facts instead of persuading potential witnesses of my guilt has been made or was being made. But I should have realized that on the last day of my forced participation in the Battle of New Orleans, Assistant District Attorney Jim Alcox joking about uh, there being a slight physical resemblance between me and Lee Oswald, to which I readily responded in good humor, was not simple, I simply idle, friendly chatter. I must admit, though, he did make it rather pointed, finally coming right out and saying with a grin, Maybe you're the second Oswald. I feel like the second Oswald, I snapped back, wondering why they were going to hand wondering when they were going to handcuff me and escort me through the basement of the police of the police building. What are Garrison's motivations? Why don't you ask Mr. Garrison? So, um Yes, there you uh, there you have it. Um I guess a little bit of a piece by uh by Kerry Thornley covering uh the saga and uh his uh, his take on the thing. And uh, now, as I said, I'm going to go to carrythornley.com just because there's so many interesting connections. Like, you can't make this shit up. Um, so this is, we're just talking about uh, about Carrie Thornley, Lee Harvey Oswald, Lee Harvey Oswald here. But uh, some will remember, you know, long-time Liberty, Liberty Attack radio listeners will remember. Kyle's brought up a number of times. I think uh, Gary Hunt even brought it up too. But uh, Gary Hunt was accused by Bill Cooper of being John Doe number three at the Oklahoma City bombing. And that turned into an entire deal. Um, and... Gary had to, there was a public public uh, radio show, um, probably circa maybe like 2005, 2010, long time ago, regardless, um, where it uh, came back around, where people came and you know vouched for Gary and that he was uh, you know in Florida when when this took place. There's no possible way he was in court when this, when this was happening. There's no way he could have been John D. Number Three. So Bill Cooper, um, you know, uh, I guess libel, slander, false false uh, accusation, unfortunately. Um, but uh, you you find these connections, and I and I guess that maybe it's just me. Um, <laughs> thought about that too, but, um, anyway, yeah, lots, there's, there's always, there's always interesting connections like these, but, um, anyway, we aren't even done yet. We aren't even done yet. CarrieThornley.com, go check it out. Um, but, uh, this is just, uh, you know, some short stuff from the short excerpts from the website. Fantastic. You're going to love it. Carrie Thornley was the first and only person to write a book about Lee Harvey Oswald before Oswald was arrested in the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. The book of fiction was The Idol Warriors. Thornley and Oswald served in the U.S. Marines together, both challenged the American establishment and had similar looks. After the assassination, Thornley wrote the nonfiction Oswald. Carrie Wendell Thornley was called in by Jim Garrison and the Warren Commission to testify after the assassination. Some believe Thornley was investigated as the second Oswald. He was charged with perjury, a charge that was later dropped. Some believe Thornley's later mental illness was due to drug experimentation conducted on members of the military, including Oswald. Ready for another connection, guys? Others suspect being linked to the assassination. Uh, others suspect being linked to the assassination contributed to his paranoia. Handbill linking John F. Kennedy to communism and treasonous acts against the United States of America. This was circulated in Dallas on November twenty first, nineteen sixty three, right before Kennedy was shot and killed. Um, so this is a JFK treason poster um, linking JFK to communism and treasonous acts, and that was uh, again circulated in Dallas on. No, on the day right before Kennedy was shot and killed. Interesting. Okay. 
show that on screen for you guys to take a look at. Um, a current affair uh, was Carrie Thornley in a competition with Lee Harvey Oswald to assassinate President John F. Kennedy. This program seems to say so. This Fox TV show is said to have ranged from hard news to entertainment, scandals, gossip, and exploitative tabloid journalism. Viewers might want to know that according to Thornley's friend, Robert Anton Wilson, and others, Thornley was suffering from mental illness when this affair interview was conducted and program made by a current affair. Excuse me. Uh, Warren Commission testimony, uh, testimony of Carrie Thornley was taken at 9.40 a.m. on May 18th, 1964, uh, Washington, uh, in Washington, D.C. by Messier, Messiers, I guess would be the full... The full uh, full title of that, uh, full, yeah, the full title. Uh, Messiers, John Lee, and uh, Albert E. Jenner Jr., assistant counsel of the president's uh, commission. And here's the yeah, here's the connection. Sorry, MK Ultra. Both Carrie Thornley and Lee Harvey Oswald may have been subjected to the CIA's top secret MK Ultra uh, mind control experiments using drugs, including LSD. This could have affected or even caused their antipathy toward Kennedy. The MK Ultra records were ordered destroyed, so we may never know for certain. But MK Ultra has been verified as real. Um, the only book written about Lee Harvey Oswald, uh, the Idol Warriors, the alleged killer of President John F. Kennedy before the assassination, uh, actually it was about Johnny Shelburne, a fictional character based on Oswald. Uh, Thornley was stationed with Oswald in Japan and said that both of them were subjected to Project MK Ultra, drug-based mind control experiments verified to have been conducted by the U.S. government CIA. There's evidence such experiments were held, but were they on Thornley and were they on Thornley and, and Oswald? Was that a real was that real or a product of Carrie's crazy imagination? Uh, Oswald, after the assassination of President JFK, when the name Lee Harvey Oswald becomes famous, Thornley decided to write his own book about the person said to have been the assassin of John F. Kennedy. The book was done in nineteen sixty five, just a couple of years after the nineteen sixty two shooting in Dallas, Texas. Thornley writes in his own his writes his own view on Oswald, a view that would later change. And here's, uh, I guess, the, the final um, the final update by this uh, by the administrator of this website uh, in history shadow. Quote, more than 38 years after President JFK was assassinated in Dallas, Americans continue to be intrigued by the central mysteries of, the mur of that murder. In 1967, New Orleans Dis District Attorney Jim Garrison set out to answer those unanswered questions. Along the way, he managed to indict three men in connection with what he perceived to be a New Orleans-based conspiracy. With the 1969 acquittal of his prime suspect, suspect Clay Shaw, Garrison's probe was universally criticized and has since been largely ignored. Few have examined Garrison's lesser-known evidence, such as his perjury case against Kerry Thornley, a Marine Corps um, associate of accused uh, assassin Lee Harvey Oswald. Veteran researcher Joe G. Biles provides us, provides us with, for the first time, a book-length look at the life and lies of Kerry W. Thornley, which I'll have to send a copy of. I did not know this website was out there. I did not know that... All this was archived, um, so yeah, I'll be uh, a <clears throat> for entertainment purposes. I'll be uh, taking a look at, uh, at these things because again, you know, it's not it's not super important in the, in the realm of self liberation. But hell, you know, it's, it's interesting parts of uh, you know libertarian history and um, you know kind of uh, you know interesting connections. And uh, I don't know. I think we could. Uh, I'll use a little a little. I don't know. Self liberation oriented entertainment. That's not propaganda or, you know, the Bernays box of Netflix. Uh, so hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed that. Um, let me see if there's anything else uh, interesting of note here. Um, I don't think so. I do not think so. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, I, I plan on doing, uh, it'd, be, it'd be cool to do more, more of these shorter regular episodes. And uh, yeah, lots of, uh, lots of articles uh, to go through. Lots of great stuff to pull out of just Ocean Freedom Notes and Ocean Living Alone. And uh, I will begin uh, to digitize uh, Vonnie Life 1 to Vonnie Life uh, 10. Um, we've got uh, Vonnie Life March 1973 out. Um, obviously, I've had that out for a year and a half or so, but uh, this will be, uh, you know, 10 editions. Um, Vonnie Life, it's, it's going to be... Um, o o Ocean Freedom Notes and Ocean Living was great, but as far as practical stuff for self-liberators, um, you know, Vonnie Life is where it's at. Um, it's uh, definitely where it's at. It's, uh, you know, very very much more refined, no political nonsense, no... Um, you know, um, it's not, uh, it's not theoretical. No, there's, there's some theory in there, obviously, but it's, it's very, very much, um, very much about, uh, about the, the self-liberation. So you have, uh, you can, uh, you'll have that to, to look forward to as well. So, um, I think that's all. Um, website's moniepodcast.com. Please do check out Liberty Attack Publications, um, for all of these, uh, for all of these books, uh, .com. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Uh, yeah, until next time. Thank you.